looked up and saw a man standing across from him with a sword drawn. Drawn sword means it's time to fight. And I'm looking at you. And Joshua walked up to him because Joshua was a bad man. He said, are you for us or for our enemies? He said, neither. Well, who is this? Neither. That's the way God deals with, does with us. We got our little groups. Are you with us? Are you with them? We separated from each other. He said, neither. If there's going to be a shift, you're shifting. So it means if I'm going to shift, I got to locate where he is. What's his heart? What's his mindset? What is he saying? How does he do things? Come in the church doesn't mean I'm with him. It just means I came to church. You know who else can come to church? The devil. And he probably has a better attendance record than most saints. Things change in church when the power and presence of the Almighty One is there. The Lord Jesus went into the temple. The temple had been going on for, for centuries. And there was a man that had a demon attending church. It wasn't until the Lord come in there that the devil spoke up. He'd been hanging out with everybody. When he had the potlucks at the church, he right there with him, eating. Probably helped cook something. Who knows? If they can't cook, they, they contributed something. Comfortable in the temple. When the Lord came in, the devil in the man hollered out, Hey! We know who you are. You're the son of the living God. He didn't say, you are a child of Zeus, a son of Baal. You're the son of the living God. We know who you are. He told him to shut up and come out of it. Nobody asked you to advertise for God. How could he sit there all the time? Because the power ain't there. The power is there when you make a conscious decision. I'm going to sit at your feet. At his feet comes correction. Remember those two sisters, Martha and Mary? Martha said, let's work. Mary sat at his feet. She got mad. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I sat at your feet. And so the Lord appeared to him. He said, I'm on, not on your side or their side. I have come now. I just showed up as the Lord or the captain of the armies of God. I want you to see who I am. You've been praying to me, but I want you to see me. Joshua looked in the face of the creator and the Bible said he fell on his face in the dirt. He only had one question. What does my Lord require of me? What was wrong? Joshua was serving God but didn't let him be Lord. So his instructions to Joshua was not, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do this and that. He said, take your sandals off your feet for the ground which you stand on is holy. The shift, I'm changing your walk. When you have your sandals on, that means you're getting ready to go somewhere. You put them on because you decided you're going somewhere. You know how it is. 
when you put your house shoes on, where are you going? Yeah. Uh-huh. Where are you going? You're lounging around the house. Well, I don't know. Some folks nowadays, they wear their pajamas to the store. It's like, okay, why don't you just drag the bed into Walmart? When you put your shoes on, you got shoes you wear to work, you got shoes you wear to church, and y'all, I think just about everybody, men and women, they, uh, most shoes, these real pretty ones, they only got a, a two and a half, three hour, uh, after that you got to take them off. I'm going to talk on this side. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, I, I got some expensive shoes. they expensive to me. But they got two and a half hours. Two hours. After that, it's like something down on the... Mm, mm. The toes start getting big and a little toe bigger is the big toe now. When you get them out, you at home. Somebody says, let's go out to dinner. <laughs> and now y'all go on. You got to soak them. I figured that would wake y'all up. (laughs) And Joshua fell on his face and he took his shoes, took his sandals off, which meant you don't move unless I instruct you. In this season, this is what God is saying to us. You take notes. At what point do you write it on the tablet of your heart? Because that word ain't alive for you until it gets on your heart. Man. Am I making sense here? So this is what he's doing with all of us. He has shown us that we have the power. The blessing is on our life. When you got saved, the blessing came with the package. But we got to learn how to activate it. And you do it by faith. You got to come up to his level. You got to see yourself the way he sees you. You got to say about yourself what he says about you. You got to believe your value. He set the value rating on your life. Look at your neighbor and say, my value is equal to yours. It's extremely high. When we know that, I'm not talking about information in our head. When we know, have a revelation of it, then you see your neighbor different. I said you see your neighbor differently. Not downgrading them. Because if you downgrade them, you just downgraded you. But when you see their value, you can get in front of them and say that that you're doing is beneath you. A person who's white was talking to Pastor Cheryl and I. This has been some time back. And they told us when we were children, we were told and taught that the blessing was our inheritance. I thought, wow. When we were children, we heard God had cursed our people. So you grow up with that and you pass it on. And now, 
good and grown, you're finding out from the word that that was a lie. So God's having to undo and unhook and pull the cords and threads of lies out of our system and get us to believe the truth. You're not cursed. You're blessed. Say, I'm blessed with the blessing. The same blessing that Adam had and that Abraham has. It belongs to Christ Jesus, and he has given it to me. Which means there is nothing that you can't accomplish that God has assigned for you to accomplish. But you got to believe it. Hmm. Oh, God. So Joshua went and conquered, but he only did what God told him to do. He knew how to take a city, but God told him, this is what I want you to do with Jericho. Show up and all of y'all march around the walls once every day at the time I tell you to go and tell your people, shut your mouth. Don't say nothing until the instructions are given. Why? One, unity. The other, he was teaching them how to live by faith. And that's why the Lord told me, he said, I want you to do a recap because the next thing, we're going to teach you how to live by faith. This is when the explosiveness of the blessing and its manifestation will begin to happen in your life. Because to live by faith is a decision, not happenstance. You choose to do this. Hello. It's not a shot in the dark. It's bringing what's a reality in heaven into manifestation in this three-dimensional world. Yeah. You. That's what the Lord did. In heaven, healing is the reality. You're whole. So he brought the reality into the earth room. Be healed. Your faith has made you whole. And he didn't operate as the king of glory. He operated as a man full of the spirit of God. How do you stay full of the spirit of God? I'll be right here at your feet forever. God, God know he got a man, a woman. He can't shake them off. They're like, I can roll with you. See, when the Lord corrects us, we think he's trying to get rid of us. He don't like me. You can't rule without correction. You can't reign without correction because you ain't never been this way before. So we've been living in fear, calling it faith. We're going to teach you what the difference is and how to overcome. Glory to God. The Bible said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Everything in the world, all its systems, you can overcome all of it. He said, this is the victory, our faith. So this is where God is taking you. Ooh, we, boy, it's a cloud in here. And the cloud doesn't feel like a mist. It feels like weight. Hmm. I got to say this. Are you looking at me? 
I'm saying this to everybody. But you in particular. When Jacob went to his uncle and his father them sent him away because his brother was going to kill him because he stole the birthright. When he got there, there were shepherds that were had their flocks gathered at a well. And the well had a huge stone over the mouth of it, the Bible says. And he told, Jacob told the men, he said, this is the wrong time of day to be trying to water your flocks. You should go ahead and hurry and get them watered and get it over with. It's hot. And they said, we can't. Our custom is we wait till everybody get here with their flocks. Then we water all the flocks. And he said, do y'all know a man named Laban? Said, yeah, we know him. As a matter of fact, here comes his daughter. She has his flocks. And the Bible said she was a shepherdess. You know what a shepherd is? A pastor. And Jacob, when he saw her, the Bible said he lifted up his voice and wept. And he ran, watch this now, he ran and kissed her. She don't even know it. But he kissed her. I'm sure it wasn't a, if you're going to kiss, do it right. So that meant she didn't push him away. And the Bible said, Jacob turns around, Jacob, and lifted the stone that takes several men, lifted it off the mouth of the well and watered all the flock. When the time, the season came, and he and Rachel connect, something supernatural took place. And he didn't say, woman, you ain't got no business out here shepherding no sheep because God ain't called no woman to shepherd no sheep. That's a man's job. She was a shepherdess. You are a shepherd. So this is your season. That's part of why the cloud is in here. Wow. Give me that that oil. Come up here. Pastor Cheryl, will you come stand beside her? Ooh. And you're going to have to stand right here because I'm doing all I can and not fall that way. Right here. Yeah. There is a grace. that's imparted it wasn't until Joshua took his shoes off that God began to lord over his life he had to come to that place you've had to come to a spot and today God has been saying to you, lay your burdens down. There's a lot of stuff you carry you don't talk about. 
most of it you've forgotten. But the weight of it you still feel, even though you can't identify what it, the particulars are. And God said today, when I first started talking about that, I heard him say to you, cast yours on me. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Mm. Glory, glory. When you lay them down, the glory will burst forth. And part of the glory is that you're a shepherdess. There is electricity. It feels like electricity, but it's the glory of God. It comes upon you today. Hmm. To give you your identity. And to bag you up in that identity. Father, here stands a Rachel, a shepherdess. And we release this grace. Oh, cold by Sabaki Perara. Tender, gentle, strong, courageous, and full of wisdom and power. Glory. Sheba. It's your season. Mm. Ooh. Now we lift the weights. We lift the weights off. We lift the weights off. We lift the weights off. So by ABC back Yeah, you said, Lord, I'll do it. But you begin to try to map it out. And the map doesn't line up. So I wait, you said. And the Lord said, this is your season. I do the mapping. I do the mapping. Oh. Go so, go to Yeah. Yeah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Uh. Woo. Pastor Sean, Sandra, y'all help her up. I've got to say something to her. I want you to look at me. If I miss this, you can tell me that's not so. But you've dreamed 
and seen things from a little girl. And one day you say, I don't want to see nothing else. And the Lord told me to tell you, I'm not mad at you. But it's a part of who I made you to be. You saw much that I showed you. And you thought it was too heavy. Because all that I showed you stretched you. It even isolated you. And he said, let me back in, for I have much to show you and much to give you. Oh. So your call, young lady, is where you were just a moment ago, at his feet. And as your hands went back and forth, it's like laying in the water of his presence. The same water that flows from the throne, living water. Hmm. The Lord says, I got you, and I got Steve. I got your household. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Here's a refreshing. Put your hand on her belly. Receive this refreshing. Huh. It brings you out. I want you happy, said the king. I want you free. I want you liberated. Oh. Oh. Since I laid my burdens down, I feel better, so much better. Men are not going to come and listen to me.